Okay, continuing our series on flat buffers, we are going to start with saving data. Not loading yet, just save some data. So I've taken the liberty of making a save manager script. So let's make an instance of some kind of empty here, call it save manager, and plug this right on in there. So we'll need an instance of our save manager for pretty obvious reasons here. Up. Uh, I've also made some changes to our schema. So I just want to save positions. You Once you get a hang of doing one of these, you'll be able to pretty much do whatever you want with saving this kind of data. But I figured for the purpose of this tutorial, keeping this under, say, half an hour, uh, let's just save positions. So I have a data type of vector 3 here, x, y, and z. And I just have a list of positions now of vector threes. Um, it's a little janky, but at least this is a good example so that you can move ahead with whatever it is that you are trying to do without having to watch a video that's too long. I'm going to give you an example of how this actually works in the very last video here. So let's start on our save manager. Uh, we're going to need a couple of libraries here. First, we're going to need whatever your namespace was. So mine is tellwall in our schema. So remember, whatever is at the top here, namespace tellwall, not the name of the FBS file, the name of the namespace. Also remember your root type. This will be important as well. You're going to be using probably a lot more data than I am. The next thing that we're going to need is for the cat to stop eating its own cat bed, little guy. Uh, sorry. Is using flat buffers so that we can use their information. Obviously, we're using flat buffers here. We're also going to need system link uh, because of a couple things I'm going to need to do here. And using system.io. If you don't end up using some of these, that's absolutely fine. This is just what I tend to use and is in both of my save files here for both these games that I'm using as a reference because, boy, can this be complicated. We're going to make this manager singleton, so let's make it a public static save manager instance, do the whole singleton thing. Uh, you should be strongly familiar with this, especially if you're watching this video from my class. If instance destroy game object else we are the instance. Uh, basically what this does is it makes sure that you only have one save manager so that you're not doing this operation more than once. We're going to need to create a void save. We're going to call save on application quit. You're going to call this from wherever it is that you want to save. If you're, I don't know, doing checkpoints, you're lo loading a level, the person pressed a, the user pressed a save button, wherever this has to be, this part is just for the purposes of this tutorial here. So on application quit, we're going to save because it's the easiest thing for me to show you. So we can call save on application quit here. We've got the singleton ready to roll. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to compile a list of what needs to be saved. So which objects in my scene need this, you know, save operation to occur on them. So we're just going to have a list of game objects. So I'm just going to call this objects to save. And this is going to be equal to game object, find game objects with tag. Again, this is simpler. You might want to find objects with a particular interface. That's a common approach for what I would do um, for tagging objects for saving. Maybe they have some kind of iSavable interface attached to them, so find that component. You can do this however you need to. Um, I think my tag is called savable, and this is why we need the link, is I'm going to make this to list because this comes out as an array. So I'm converting this game object array that contains every object in the scene that is tagged with savable, and I'm converting this into a list and saving it in objects to save. 
Therefore, I have a list of objects to save. Next, we need to start our flat buffer builder. I'm going to call it saver. Now, your flat buffer builder is also how you load. This is just load save. Um, and we're going to make this new and set its size to 1. Uh, if you're not familiar with this syntax here, this is the same as saying new flat buffer builder. The buffer is, it, it takes in a an initial size as a parameter, excuse me. <clears throat> but you can actually just simplify this. So this is flat buffer builder saver is new flat buffer builder of size one. This will dynamically allocate to be bigger as you need it. You don't have to set this to a large size. Uh, next thing that we're going to need is if you're looking at our schema here, and you'll have to do this with yours as well, I need to create object positions, which is a list of vector threes out of this table of vector threes. So I need an array of positions. That's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to create an offset, which is essentially um, a variable in flat buffers. It'd be a little bit easier. An offset of vector threes, but I'm going to make it an array. So this is going to be our position array. Now we need to know what size this is going to be. You always need to set an array's size. So we're going to create this as a new offset of type vector three. Again, you don't really need to do this, but that's okay. This is for clarity here. So what is our size going to be? It's actually going to be the size of our objects to save. Uh, for lists, for arrays, no, nope, we made it a list. It's going to be count. So we have what is essentially an array of positions, vector threes, that is the size of the number of objects that we need to save. Pretty simple there. Uh, we're going to iterate, so I'm going to make a iterator here called i. And then for each game object, object in objects to save, so for each object that we need to save, we're going to save data. This is should start making sense to you here. We're going to create a new offset. Again, that's the same as a variable to flat buffers. Uh, we're going to call it of type vector3, and we're going to call it position. And that's going to be vector3.create. Go ahead and take a look at the tutorial that I've linked either in the last video or probably in the description here. I struggle understanding the difference between add and create personally, uh, but we'll show a little bit on what the difference is here. But let's go with create for now. We need the builder. We need a float. What do we want to save from each object that we are saving in the position? saving its x, y, and z, object transform position x, object transform position y, object transform position z. Now, position contains the position as a vector 3 of each of our objects to save. We're getting there. However, this position needs to be placed in our array because when we're looking at our schema, we are not saving individual positions, we're saving a list of them. Object list is of type vector3, which is technically an array, but it's also kind of a list. You can see why I got confused and why I'm doing this tutorial. So position array, we're going to use that iterator i, is going to be equal to position. You could do this directly. Uh, I'm trying to be a little bit more clear here. So we're going to go through every object in Objects to Save and save its position. We are building this. I'm going to reiterate this again from the smallest. So vector threes, we have to build all of the vector threes. And then we will use this table called Object Positions. 
Notice object positions is nowhere in here. We're working with vector threes to start. If you do this out of order, it will not work and it may not give you an error. So do be careful. <clears throat> now, in order to store this information, we need a vector offset. We're referring to vectors, full word vector, not vector three, as essentially arrays. And this vector offset is going to be our object position list. And that's going to be equal to something totally new here, just as we did offset vector three as an individual variable, vector three composed of these items. We are going to use object positions, the type, which I have denoted here in table object positions. This is why I'm going over this over and over again, multiple files. And we're going to create an object list vector. That's going to be our saver as usual. And the data that we've just created in position array gets to go here. And this plays nicely. Next, we have a list of object positions of all of our objects as an array. We now need, because we do not have one yet, a table of object positions. We have a vector offset, but it hasn't gone anywhere yet. Your final, your root table, needs to be created through a different means. So this is going to be object positions, because this is our root table, dot start object positions. I have not gotten the root table to compile in any other way than start add end, which is what we're going to do. You may find an approach that lets you use create. I haven't managed yet. And this just requires the builder, which is our saver here. Object positions dot add object list, which is our vector offset here, is what you need next, which is saver object positions list. So we've started our list of object positions. We've added the list of object positions, and now we're going to end the list of object positions. End positions saver. You might think that this is good enough. Some of the documentation leaves it like this. However, I found it much more useful if you end and put this into a data type. Uh, some of these things work in line, some don't. Your mileage may vary. We need an offset, so a variable, of type object positions. I'm going to call it save data. And I'm going to set it equal to the end object positions. This start add end is very much like create. Create seems to be in line. However, I have not managed to make the root table work using create. Your mileage may vary. We're going to get our saver and we're going to finish and we're going to finish on save data value. Don't forget value, save data won't work alone. And finish just says int root table, which you might just think is, oh, well, our offset of object positions is our root table, so that'll work, but it needs this value here. So finish tells our saver, tells flat buffers that we're done. We're not gonna write anything else, leave it alone. So how do we actually write this data? This is where I got stuck for three weeks, on and off, debugging, changing all of these things, doing a whole bunch of work that I didn't have to. We need a byte array that I'm going to call buffer. This is found in the documentation. However, I'm going to set it equal to saver sized byte array. Your documentation may make you do this in a different way. I don't have it up here, but you take a look at how it says to save. It says to do something different. This is the only thing I can get to work. Uh, you may find a different approach. If you do, please let me know. This is a difficult thing to do as it is. And then we needed that system IO so that we could do file write all bytes. Um, your path is gonna be different than mine. Let me take a look at uh, what I should set the path to here. 
let's make string path because we're going to use it in the next video anyway. Uh, save example and we'll use this as a brief as a suffix. Uh, and this will probably be fine. Uh, you'll need to put this wherever you need to put your saves. This depends entirely on your game. Sometimes this will be application data path. Uh, sometimes this will be application persistent data path. If you're using Steam, this might be, uh, you know, somewhere else on the on the hard drive where you can get it so that you can use cloud saves. So we are going to write all of these bytes because again, flat buffers is just byte buffers. Uh, and we'll put it on application data path uh, plus path. And we're going to send it this buffer. Uh, this just makes it really easy for me to get to it for this tutorial. You probably don't want to put it here. This probably won't be useful to you. Let's also have it tell us where we need to go uh, for this uh, information. Let's find out where the save file is. And just say wrote... Uh, saver offset, this is the size, this is how many bytes you wrote, uh, bytes 2, and then path. So this will say wrote, uh, I don't know, there's three of these, it's probably 48 bytes to this path here. And this should be enough, this should work okay. Let's take a look out here. Got save manager. Save manager should be attached to an object as it is. We should have an object, which is what we need next. Let's just make it a cube. Tag it with saveable. Uh, we'll need this as a prefab, so I'm going to keep this for a little bit later. And see if we can save this data. Wrote 36 bytes to slash save example telemall. Uh, which is there. <laughs> uh, let's find out. Hold on. Show explorer. Slash save example. Oh, it put it somewhere. Ah, here it is. Save example telewall. Where did it go? Unity videos assets. It went here. Ah, I did have it right. If we open this file, you get absolutely nothing. This is not human readable. This is FF, null, null, ACK, BS, COT. And even when I have a lot of information and I'm saving strings, so this is a real file, this is not what we just created, this is what you should have if yours is identical to mine, and it probably shouldn't be. My real file for Teleball looks something like this. You can see a couple of strings in there for some save data. This is saving 20 objects or so. You'll be able to see this in the last video. So not human readable. However, we did save the data, and in the next video, we're going to load it.